Good afternoon, dear audience, and welcome to today's DHU Friday Talks. And uh, my name is Eileen, and I will be your host today. And uh, today's topic uh, is to be your boss and find entrepreneurship opportunities in China. And uh, we invite Dr. Anson Vermulem uh, to be our guest here to provide some suggestions and, uh, on how to do entrepreneurships in China. So uh, let me introduce Dr. Anson uh, Vermulem briefly at the very beginning. Ansem has been teaching in the Netherlands and in China for more than 20 years. And uh, her, uh, his special uh, subjects is in entrepreneurship and uh, logistics. And uh, with his help, he's been teaching the entrepreneurship and innovation course in Zhonghua University for more than 10 years. And uh, with his, his help, a lot of students uh, managed to set up their uh, own company in China or have some connection uh, relationship with China. Uh, so Ansem, uh, would you like to say a little bit more about yourself? Thank you, Lili. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, my name is Ansel, Anselm from Mulen. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm married, two kids. And uh, in my previous job, I have had my own company. And um, which means that although I am now teaching, I also have experience with uh, setting up my own company. And um, that's basically the reason that about 10 years ago, Tom Hua was asking me to start a new course for Tom Hua uh, called Entrepreneurship and Innovation. And 10 years ago, that was rather special because uh, there were not so many universities in China which were offering these kind of courses. So it was, uh, Donghua was really at the forefront of uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, direction. And at the beginning, it was, of course, a very big challenge because my special, my specialty, my, my main topic is logistics supply chain management. Uh, but because of my background of having this own, my own company, I also knew a little bit more about entrepreneurship. However, that does not say that you know that you are then uh, 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 that you know how to teach entrepreneurship because teaching entrepreneurship is uh, something uh, which is uh, rather special. So then, and so you mentioned the ten years ago you started this course. So. Why do you think it is important for China to stimulate entrepreneurship and uh, innovation? Yeah, that's, uh, that's I, I think, uh, of course, entrepreneurship and innovation is not new. It's already started a long time ago in the United States. But China was also, at that, at that time, in, uh, about 2012, 2013, China was also thinking about uh, uh, doing this. And... The main reason for doing it is, of course, that, yeah, you can say small, medium enterprises in most countries are the biggest engine of growth in the economy. And it's not um, the, the, the conventional conservative state-owned enterprises which are creating jobs and which are, let's say, um, um, of course, they... they they, um, they are good for growth for the economy, but SMEs also. And China saw this. And China was thinking, uh, let's uh, try to stimulate young people to set up their own company and to be innovative. And uh, at that time, you saw at many universities in China that uh, there was a lot of activity in terms of incubation center, in terms of new courses, new introduction of courses. And uh, yeah, Don Hua also did it. Yeah, I do know that the Chinese government do encourage young people to start their own company, be their boss, not only to local uh, students, but to foreigners. Uh, uh, we do have this uh, kind of visa called entrepreneur visa for young graduates who just graduate from a Chinese universities to support them to have their own startup in China. So uh, we're talking about uh, this uh, entrepreneurship uh, and uh, 
Could you evaluate the Chinese business environment uh, a little bit from the perspective of uh, entrepreneurship? That's, a, that's uh, of course, there's, there are many things to say about uh, the econo economic situation in China. And, and uh, many people are talking about that it's a little bit more difficult at the moment because of various reasons. But what I see is also a rather active entrepreneurial environment. I see many young people um, very interested in setting up their own company. Not only Chinese people, but definitely also foreign people in uh, China. And at Donghua University in the past, um, are the students at Donghua University, they were coming from, let's say, uh, yeah, all over the world. And of course, by nature, these people, these students, they were rather adventurous and therefore also by nature rather entrepreneurial. And moreover, I have to say that uh, many of these students were coming from families which were having their own companies. So in that sense, it was, um, it was very good to, uh, to start entrepreneurship. If you talk in China in general, um, I think, especially in Shanghai, there's a lot of activity going on. Um, besides the incubation center, besides venture capitalist companies, business angels, etc., most of the most of the universities in Shanghai are also having incubation centers and having their own programs for uh, for setting up businesses. Um, if you talk for foreigners, I must say that if you are a foreigner in China to set up your company. There, there are some special uh, things you have to organize. And uh, these special, it's, it's, it goes a little bit too far to discuss this in detail. But uh, you already mentioned, uh, Yi Ling, that there was a kind of, let's say, possibility for a student when they have finished their study in China, that they will be open to uh, set up a company here. Maybe you can say something about this? Uh, well... This is uh, the policy of a Chinese uh, uh, government to encourage uh, uh, young uh, international students. Uh, so once the students uh, graduate from a Chinese university, not a master, bachelor, or PhD, all level is okay. Uh, as long as they have a business plan uh, and get support from incubation center, get some certificates, they can get a two year uh, visa called entrepreneurship visa. So it's not necessary for uh, for the uh, students to really uh, register a company or invest money. As long as they have a business plan, they can get two years visa. Basically, we can say the government, Chinese government will give students two years so that they can implement their uh, dreams. So, you know, uh, during these two years with the support of incubation, you know, some success, so, you know, really become their own boss and having their company set up in China. Some may be not working well, then they can uh, find a jobs, get a working visa. So uh, that's the policy. From this visa policy, you can see uh, the Chinese, uh, what kind of uh, support the Chinese government will provide to uh, international students. Uh, so we do mention, you know, so a little bit about the general environment. So, Anson, could you elaborate a little bit more on the possible opportunities for entrepreneurial activities in China? Yes, of course, you can say that there are many opportunities, but I think that uh, if you talk a little bit more uh, specific, I think that in China, it's very important that you... I, I don't know how, uh, how to say it different, but I would like to say it, that you follow the government. And in that sense, uh, when you follow the government and you read articles from the government, especially five-year plans, uh, other documents related to industry development, etc., then you will see that China has more or less uh, selected several areas of business which are stimulated um, in a very big way. And um, most of these industries are rather technical, I must say. To give you an example, 
uh, for example, quantum technology, mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, semiconductors. It's a very, very big uh, topic for China, of course. Everybody knows, everybody understands. Another one is biotechnology. And um, seed, the seed industry is also mm -hmm. one of those things where the Chinese government is very much uh, focusing. If you, if you take some, let's say, some derivative from it, most probably you can say about, you could talk something like uh, food related industries. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity and uh, in, in those kind of fields. On the other side, of course, um, what is uh, China? China is a very, um, if you look at the economy of China and you look at the, uh, the buildup of the GDP, then you will also see that China is more than most countries, a rather yeah, ma manufacturing country. It's a, it's a country where manufacturing is very important. And by nature, manufacturing is a very good source for innovation. Mm -hmm. And that's also a very, a very strong source and also a very strong opportunity to, to when, you, when you have this base in manufacturing, there will, be, there will come innovation from that manufacturing base. And because of these new, new things, of course, there are many opportunities as well to start uh, companies. And I think uh, this, is, uh, this is something which is very important. Another uh, thing is that, um, um, yeah, that's also something which, which I would like to say is that if you look at opportunities to do business in China, and you look at entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial activities, then most probably people always think about buying. You buy products in China, mm -hmm. and you sell them to your home country, and that is a good business. Of course, that's good business. But you also have to think a little bit more about selling to China. And uh, in that sense, um, yeah, maybe you can also say something about this because there is was there was a there is every year a very big fair in uh, China which is related to uh, imports. Oh, yeah, so that's uh, to China. Maybe uh, so that's the chi uh, China import uh, international import uh, expo. That's one of the biggest events uh, yeah. in Shanghai, held in Shanghai uh, every November. Basically, you know, every country, uh, many companies in different countries will bring their products to introduce to China. So, well, because of the huge population, I think because of the huge population yeah. and uh, you know, that's that's a very good thing. Uh, bridging the middle class. Yeah. So, you know, for example, myself. I like buy goods from different countries, uh, try different goods. So I think a lot of people are similar. So uh, right now we can buy goods from uh, Russia, India, Indonesia, almost everywhere in the world. So, and uh, we love to see more goods. So uh, yeah, I agree with Ansem. So not only thinking about uh, exporting products from China, uh, even so Chinese products, I should be proud of to say it's cheap and uh, with good quality, but also you can also consider to import uh, goods to China. Uh, China. May I say something? Sure, please. I think that uh, from a Western perspective, and, and of course I have a Western perspective, although uh, I have lived in China for a rather long time, um, is that um, you, I think that China is not cheap. I'm sorry to say that. Um, in, in terms of uh, products, um, of course, China is most probably cheaper than most Western countries when you start producing uh, products in China. But what I have seen in the last five years, and this is very specific, that the quality has improved so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that if you as, let's say, an entrepreneur, you come to China and you really like, you want, you want to buy something in China, then in my view... I don't think you should come here in order to buy cheap. I think you should come here to buy here a little bit less expensive, but a relatively very good quality, because that is actually really what's happening uh, these days. And uh, you can actually, when you are in China, you will see that the quality has improved enormously in the last uh, years. I think also the technology. Yes, the technology, very much technology driven. And uh, yeah, the, the, because, 
and there's also something which is very interesting. Uh, Chinese are very, very good in adapting to technology. And it's not only the companies who are able to adapt to technology, but also the individual person is very strong in that. Yeah, uh, you just uh, mentioned. So it reminds me, we just met our alumni who from Kazakhstan. So he told us that the business he's doing is import the telecommunicating uh, technology from China to the Kazakhstan. And uh, like he did a lot of business with uh, Huawei, uh, those kind of uh, Chinese company. Yes. Right. So. Yes. Um, so, uh, Ansem, you have shared uh, with us uh, the potential opportunities. So a lot of them you're talking about uh, is uh, manufacturing. So how about service? You know, like uh, Shanghai, we are a service-driven cities. So from the service perspective, uh, so what do you think about uh, the entrepreneurship opportunities? <clears throat> if you talk services, I think you, should, you, you talk things like tourism. You talk things That's like awesome. logistics, like okay. talk like banking, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you, I can say something about these things. If you talk, for example, logistics, um, strangely enough, and um, if you look at total logistics activities in in China, then a very very large part of all logistics activities in China is done by logistics companies from China, and not so much. From international companies, I think there is a very big room for, uh, let's say, uh, uh, th there's a, there is opportunity, I guess, for logistics companies to do something here. If you talk about finance and uh, financial technology, um, I think th there's there are some challenges because, in my feeling, um, banks here, but also uh, companies like Alipay, companies like WeChat. We all know WeChat Pay are uh, very advanced already, and um, so yeah, you could say that that they are more advanced even than most than most let's say financial technology companies in in the Western world. If you talk tourism, and that's of course a very interesting one because, um, yeah, COVID, and that COVID hit hard. And it did not only hit hard uh, in China, it also hit hard in uh, other countries. But you feel uh, that there is a kind of thing going on. Uh, recently, for example, very interesting, um, China has opened uh, visa. So, no, I, I, say, I say it wrong. But for certain countries in the world, it is uh, easy for, uh, it is possible to come to China without a visa. I think that's a very good sign. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that this will continue so that uh, tourism will start uh, yeah, will start up again. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's it's also in the interest of China, I would say. Yeah, uh, I remember I saw the news like after this uh, uh, free visa policy announced that the traveler to China did yeah. increase. Yeah. Uh, and actually, uh, Anson talking about is foreigners travel to China. and. Uh, uh, also, the potential opportunities for Chinese people, right now, a lot of middle class uh, 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 Chinese people are willing to travel abroad to experience the world. Uh, for example, uh, like me, I if I have opportunities, I will try to uh, uh, travel abroad once per year. Uh, so uh, even though this industry hit by the pandemic, uh, you know, dramatically, but also the study found that it's uh, uh, getting back, uh, you know, the number of uh, people traveling abroad getting back very quickly is almost the same as the 2009 be uh, before pandemic. I think that's also a, a very good potential if you, uh, you know, in your own countries, so you like uh, having uh, tourists from China, that's uh, a very good uh, uh very potential uh, areas for uh, people to consider. Uh, so we have uh, shared some opinions about uh, the opportunities. Of course, uh, everything has two sides. So what kind of challenges do you think uh, if you, uh, as a young entrepreneur, what kind of challenge yeah. you will face? Yeah, that's always a good one. As I must say that the first time I went to China was a long time ago, 1986. And uh, of course I didn't know anything. Not, not anything about the language, a uh, little bit about the culture. Uh, but of course, there are two things, language and culture. They are different. And uh, language, 
uh, is very useful when you when you uh, can talk, when you can speak, and when you can read, for obvious reasons. Uh, but then also culture. Uh, the culture of doing business is very different, and you have to learn that. You have to adapt yourself uh, to that. I think uh, this this is a kind of open door. Because you don't, you not only have to do that in China, you also have to do that in other countries. Even when you go to your neighbor, you have to adapt yourself. But in China, it's rather specific. It, it, it's, it really goes a little bit far. That doesn't mean that you cannot be yourself. I, th I still think that rule number one is most probably try to be yourself, even when you don't know the culture. Mm -hmm. I think don't go away from yourself because that is the, the, the worst thing you can do. Another very big challenge, especially for foreigners, is rules and regulations. And uh, rules and regulations are, there are many rules and regulations, but also rules and regulations tend to change. And in that context, especially when you want to start up your own business, and when you want to start an entity, like a woofy or something like that, then please do not try to do it yourself. Uh, you need professional help with that. And what I, what I mean is, uh, this is this is a service which can only be done by, by people who are on top of these things. Because if you think you can do it yourself, you make many mistakes. And again, these rules and regulations are there. They are good, but also subject to change. So be careful. Another very big challenge is also in my view, underestimated by, uh, by, by many people, is that digitalization. That's true. And um, there is a lot, everything is digital here. And um, uh, the, 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 the connection, the digital connection with your audience, with your customers, should be top. Without it, most probably you will not be succeeding in China. Uh, you, and this is, this is uh, most probably a little bit different from, uh, from the country where you are from. And of course, everybody is talking about the super apps, uh, WeChat, and you, we, know, we all know them. But also the interface and the way um, yeah, these apps are working, it's special. It's rather Chinese, I must say. Also here, and I, I don't want to... Uh, sound like I am making a promotion for professionals. That's not what I want to do. But also here you need help. You really need help. And also in China, there are many good, also Western companies who know a lot about, uh, let's say, the digital landscape, the digital, uh, digital ecosystem in China. So please uh, do not think you can do this yourself. And I think... Uh, there are many other challenges, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, also, the, the time of setting up a company here, the setting up a real entity, is longer than you think. Name approval and so on. Um, takes some time. Everything between two and three months. Um, that's a rather long time if you compare it to, uh, for example, other countries when you are uh, setting up something. And by the way, uh, this is for foreigners. Huh? This is not for Chinese uh, people. I mean, setting up an entity, a woofy, a wholly owned foreign enterprise for, for foreigners is uh, yeah, taking two, two to three months uh, about. Yeah. But uh, actually, the government, especially some uh, top tier uh, yeah. cities like Shanghai, Beijing, they're trying to yeah. uh, change the procedures to uh, like uh, we have adapting the uh, you know, the concept called a one station concept. So yeah. that's to help uh, foreigners to finish uh, everything, uh, you know, in one step, so which will faster the uh, process uh, uh, as long as, uh, you know, the um, founders qualifies uh, or the requirements, uh, you know, uh, like Ansem said, you know, we have, uh, we do have a lot of uh, policy regulations, uh, but I also want to add one thing is faster changes, in everything, yeah. Yeah. you know, including the rules, regulations, uh, you know, the, you know, the government is also trying to see, uh, you know, 
to to make changes based on the feedbacks, uh, you know, what kind of problems they face trying to change this. So uh, faster changes, not only talking about the whole environment, yeah. Yeah. but also uh, the policy as well. Uh, so may I add one thing? Sure, please. Yeah. Um, forgot to mention free trade zones. And uh, Shanghai is, of course, the free trade zone, but there are many other free trade zones in China. And in those free trade zones, it's uh, rather beneficial for foreign companies to start their company. Yes, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, for the free trade zone in Shanghai, there's one company actually, they provide the support, you know, uh, professional support to help and guide the uh, foreigners to uh, fund their own companies in China. So, you know, so especially in free trade zone, well, uh, they also will uh, beneficial from those tax free uh, policies, a lot of policies. So that's also some policies uh, for the government to encourage uh, entrepreneurships. Okay. Yeah. So uh, and some uh, so talking about these challenges. So what kind of suggestions will you provide to the audience on how to grasp those uh, entrepreneurship opportunities in China? Yeah, I don't want I want I don't want to fall in repetition. I think, but but then again, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. One of the things I was I'm always thinking, if I uh, would be if I would be young, and if I would be entrepreneurial, then I wouldn't go to uh, big cities. And um, what do what do I what do I mean with big cities? That's that's a, that's a little bit strange to say because there are many 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 big cities in China. Uh, but I wouldn't go to the to the let's say the tier one cities. I would go to uh, let's say the lower tier cities because in those kind of cities there are still many things to do, mm -hmm. and you can go to places. Uh, you can go into the western part of China. Very interesting, very beautiful also, and a lot of activities are taking place there. And um, if you go to a if if you go to a place like Guangzhou or something like that, it's rather expensive also. And lots of many things have been done there already. So think about going to cities like Kunming or Shishuangbana or uh, Urumqi. Uh, nice cities with a lot of potential. And you have to. Uh, another good thing about those cities is that most probably you will be more forced to speak the language. So. In other words, you will also learn the language a little bit more quicker. And it's in many of those cities, it's a very nice environment with a very good climate and uh, yeah, a good, a good business plan. Another thing, um, very important, sorry to say again, that word, you, you need to network. Uh, this is an open door, yes. but, uh, and everybody is networking when you are an entrepreneur. But in China, it's especially important. It's very important who you know. And you have to, you have to put your efforts there. And um, yeah, you have, to, you have to go to, to gatherings and seminars, et cetera, et cetera, to, to get to know the people and to understand how things are going. Um, very important for me, and uh, some, there's something which I have recognized in, uh, let's say, uh, in China, uh, whether this is a recommendation or an opportunity, or uh, you have to, we can argue about this, but I think that the entrepreneurial system in China is in two things a little bit different from what I am used to, for example, in Western Europe. The first thing is, of course, the potential to scale up. It's huge. It's enormous. So uh, it is it is very, very possible from very small to relatively very big in a relatively short time. And that's, yeah, everybody understands. It's not so, it is much, very much related to demographics and to, uh, yeah, to things like that. Another thing which I find very interesting, and that is also a little bit different from, let's say, the Western world, is that uh, Chinese companies, especially in the startup phase, are rather flexible. And they are very good in adapting their products and services yeah. along the way. 
So in other words, most probably you you think from a Western perspective, you only will go into the market when everything is checked and everything is perfect. Of course, that would be a fantastic scenario. But here, the, the flexibility and adaptability during that introduction stage is huge. That's also, yeah, I would say rather opportunity. That's a, that's a good opportunity. And then the things which I have already mentioned, think about importing, think about uh, fashion products, think about, think about quality food products, but also think about uh, technology related to those industries which I have mentioned in those five-year plans. And another, can I say, recommendation sure. is, is uh, adapt yourself. Uh, of course, uh, culturally, uh, you have to, because uh, you don't want to make mistakes with that. But on the other side, always try to be yourself. So do not overdo it in a way that it becomes a little bit artificial, mm -hmm. I would say. Yes. And, uh, and, the, and the Chinese people understand this. They understand that you are not from China. Yeah. I'm sure you understand that also. And the last thing I want to say about this is digital. That's very and, important. Uh, yes. I am not keen, not, not keen is not the right, correct word, but let me, I'm not an expert. Uh, I know people who are experts in those things. Uh, digital connection cannot be underestimated. And uh, you really have to have a good name in Chinese characters. You really have to have to have a good platform. You have to use the, the correct platform. You also have to use the correct interface with your, for example, app. Otherwise, um, I wouldn't say that you will not be successful, but the chances that you will become successful are much lower. That's what I wanted to say about Yeah, this. I agree with that. The digital marketing in China is very uh, important right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if in other countries you're talking about the Facebook, Instagram, there's one big, you know, there are several apps is also quite important in China, like a WeChat uh, uh, friend circle and also the TikTok Chinese version. I think when we mention about TikTok, almost everyone knows, but it starts in China and uh, almost everyone use TikTok. So a lot of company do uh, you know, invest a lot in TikTok. So which, uh, especially for startups, I think TikTok or WeChat, so those platform app will attract Chinese customers quickly, very quickly. So I agree with this uh, answer. It's yeah. a challenge. It's a and, big and, challenge. And the use of KOLs. And yes. But I also, but I also think it's a good opportunity as well. You know, as long as, uh, you know, Basically, it's well open doors to everyone. As long as you know how to use these tools, use these tools wisely, you know, you can break this barrier of language, barrier of the countries, uh, then to attract, uh, you know, those audience, uh, uh, to attract the customers, uh, you know, uh, quicker than traditional marketing methods. So that's what I uh, think. Um, so uh, also, uh, for Anselm, you mentioned about uh, the language cultures. Uh, I, I totally agree. So we do have students, uh, you know, uh, you know, mention, I just discussed this. Uh, uh, we just mentioned about this Kazakhstan alumni. Uh, he speak uh, Chinese very well. And he said even so, uh, his business is founded in his own countries. But in order to working with Chinese companies, you know, his language skill, Chinese language skills do helps a lot. Yes, and uh, well, it's a, maybe you can say it's a kind of promotion. So uh, from our experience for you to improve your Chinese language, the best way, the most effective and efficient way actually is to come to study and live in China for a period of time. It uh, improves your understanding about the language as well as the culture. You only know China well, after you are here, 
You are not learn us from the media. You have to be uh, to be here, and also uh, Anson just mentioned about the network. Yeah, I think there's a famous word called Guan Xi because of the Chinese uh, network is so important, and that's also uh, very important. If you are able to be here, you will build your Guan Xi, and uh, you possibly you will find your partners, Chinese partners, uh, you know, which will make your uh, startup easy to set up. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, there's something I am a little bit disagree with Ansem, you know, Ansem mentioned about your suggestion uh, uh, to go to uh, find opportunities in, not in first tier uh, uh, cities. I agree with this perspective, but on the other hand, uh, Donghua University, we are in Shanghai, the first tier <laughs> cities. Uh, it also has some advantages uh, because yes. uh, here, the language barriers, cultural barrier will be less. You know, it's uh, very easy for international foreigners to find partners, to build networks and uh, uh, to have uh, startups because the people here are very internationalized, uh, you know, so they will accept those new things very quickly, easily, and uh, they have, have uh, they are able to uh, connect with uh, foreigners. Uh, I think uh, huge populations here can speak English well, so uh, they also able to, uh, you also able to build up those things uh, easier than second or third tier country. So I think it has pros and cons for both sides. So that's my uh, understanding. Uh, so uh, we talk about the challenges. So we talked about some uh, suggestions uh, uh, and the opportunities. So uh, and some, so uh, there's, a, I, I want to mention one thing. So when we're talking about entrepreneurship opportunities in China, we are not only limited to setting up a company in China, right? So you can have your own company set up in your country, but doing business with China for Chinese customers, that's also uh, something we want folks. So uh, Ansem, so um, uh, I know that uh, you have many students already set up their own companies. So could you share some interesting stories very briefly, like what kind of business they are doing? Uh, maybe give the audience some ideas. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, uh, yeah, that's that's of course uh, very true. Um, I I already mentioned uh, that uh, earlier that our that the students here are by nature already rather adventurous and entrepreneurial, and that uh, you already noticed this when you are uh, seeing them in the first semester. And when you do a course like Introduction to Business, um, uh, there are people who are so eager to do their business. And some of them, they already have very good ideas. Uh, at the first semester of their uh, study. And one of, the, one of the persons, it was some time ago, um, he was having this idea. He introduced it in Introduction to Business, the first course in the curriculum. And actually, at the moment, he's doing that uh, business model. He's doing that business plan in Shanghai, rather uh, successful. And uh, it's, a, it's a related to, uh, uh, to helping people adapting to the culture and work environment in China. Other specific, uh, specific uh, examples are related to, for example, the fashion industry. Uh, people who are uh, buying products in China, um, related to fashion and selling their products into uh, other countries where they are from. I personally really like this always very much. Uh, more than, uh, no, I, I shouldn't say it like this, but I like, I like this hard uh, product business a lot because, but, but maybe that is because of my logistics uh, background. And yeah, I've seen many people uh, starting up successful companies like that. Another example which I would like to uh, say is that if you look here in China, there are many things which are rather advanced. And if you look at them and you, you see the opportunity in your own country, that is also a good model that you, that you, that you, that you copy it from China and bring it to your own country. And in that context, 
many students from Africa have done this. So at, at then you start things like a beauty salon, a specific beauty salon for ladies or something, which they have come, they have they went to in China. They see it successful, and then they think, hey, why don't I adapt this to my uh, to my country? And they see a, a gap in the market there. It's it's very good. Um, so there are many, um, yeah, many students from Donghua are already very entrepreneurial, and also many of them are starting their own business. It's not necessarily that it is uh, because of uh, Don Juan. No, I wouldn't say that. But I think that uh, Don Juan will help them a lot uh, because uh, there is an entrepreneurial course mm -hmm. and uh, there is uh, other things like uh, practical help for uh, for people to who want to start their own business. So yes. uh, that's good. Yeah. And uh, I also want to raise some examples, so like uh, we have a uh, uh, graduate doing pet industry, provide service, uh, you know, like uh, he found this uh, need for Chinese people, growing needs of uh, pets, uh, you know, uh, needs uh, in China. More and more Chinese people uh, having their own pets. So he did find the opportunities and uh, uh, successfully found uh, his company get uh, like uh, Andrew funds uh, successfully and also uh, we have a graduates doing uh, something related to tourism and also education as well he personally as an international student he see the opportunities about uh, you know uh, exchange so he trying to uh, doing this uh, studying abroad business to connect the European students uh, to introduce uh, European students to China to have internships as well as uh, you know some uh, study experience here that's something also we have uh, uh, graduates doing sports uh, you know education he found a company in China and he basically uh, supports uh, some international schools uh, in China to teach some uh, uh, sports so uh, I think that one common thing is they find that the opportunities because they are living and studying in China long enough and no Chinese people as well as international uh, experts here so which gives them opportunities uh, to find the potential yeah. business opportunities so uh, that's uh, uh, I think uh, very important if you really uh, think about uh, you know having your own company and uh, you think of China possibly a potentials uh, it's better to uh, live and uh, in China for a period of time, then it will be very helpful. Uh, so last but not least, you know, Anson, you've been teaching in China for more than 15 years. I know some of the audience, maybe the students, or may considering to pursue their degrees, uh, you know, uh, in China or in other countries. So as a teacher, uh, any other uh, suggestion you can provide to our audience as a teacher? Especially business teacher. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's that's uh, if if you uh, that, that that's a good one. If if from from um, you know what is my first question to ask my students when I'm teaching entrepreneurship and innovation. My first question to my student is, do you think I can teach you this? And then the students are looking at you at me. I, yeah. Of course, we think that you can you can teach us this because we are sitting in your class and you are supposed to teach us uh, this topic. But uh, the, 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 there is, of course, a reason that I'm asking this because I think that uh, uh, entrepreneurship is rather... Um, yeah, some people are not made for it. Is that a problem? Of course not. It doesn't matter at all. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's, no, exactly. It's not something you have to do, really. Feel free not to do it. It's very good that you don't do it, that you are ha very happy with other activities. So, but having an entrepreneurial mindset and an innovative mindset, or what can I say, a kind of uh, mindset which is uh, uh, critical and looking at things and trying to improve things, of course, that's also entrepreneurial. And you can do this, you can do this entrepreneurial activity not only for yourself, for your own company, but you can also do it in an existing company. The company where you work for. Without taking that risk 
of let's say uh, uh, entrepreneurial risk of uh, putting your money there. Yeah. And th that is also something which I always try to say to my students. Yes. That it's not only setting up your own company and run the risk and so on. No, it's also having this mindset and help your company where you are working for. I think that's very good. That's very important. Also very important. Yeah. Well, also, uh, I want to add one thing, you know, so right now, Chinese company, a lot of Chinese company trying to uh, ex uh, expand their business uh, all over the world. Yeah. They really need some uh, talents who know the local language, yeah. who know Chinese, who know Chinese culture, and who know the local culture very well to help them to manage the local uh, markets. So I think that's also a very good potential, uh, career potential for a lot of international students. Uh, you know, so we do receive uh, many requests from uh, Chinese companies looking for, you know, uh, the intern as well as graduates. Uh, you know, from uh, different countries. So uh, that's uh, you know, you, you that's uh, also another good uh, opportunities for students. Uh, but uh, I agree with Ansem. You may not, you know, fund your own company, but as long as you have this entrepreneurship mindset, you can get very good career opportunities. Uh, yeah. You know, you can get, uh, you know, uh, very bright career futures. Uh, I think, uh, you know, that uh, we finished the uh, uh, main topics today. So and some, let's uh, go through the uh, yes, questions sir. from the students to see uh, what kind of questions they have. So like us see. So if you have uh, some questions, uh, you know, you can type your questions in the chat, uh, chat box. Well, there's one student asked, is the policy applied all over the China or only in Shanghai? I think it's uh, during the time I'm talking about entrepreneurship visa policy. Uh, well, I have to be honest, it's uh, um, most of the first tier cities right now are policy adapt, uh, you know, uh, for international students, uh, you know, I'm not so quite sure about uh, uh, the third or uh, second or third tier cities, uh, but uh, um, I think this policy starts uh, uh, initiate uh, uh, China. Uh, Shanghai is the first city to apply this entrepreneurship visa uh, uh, since 2016. Uh, so at least in Shanghai, it's for sure you can do that. For other cities, I have to uh, say sorry, I'm not quite sure. So uh, in China, you know, uh, it's not a you know, countrywide to uh, adapt this policy. It's uh, using a step-by-step. -step. Uh, we will try uh, first in the first tier cities, then, uh, from, uh, you know, uh, uh, move to the second or the third tier cities. So right now, uh, I'm only sure that Shanghai, uh, we have this entrepreneurship uh, visa uh, policies and uh, a lot of incubator centers uh, and uh, some companies uh, will help students uh, on these issues. So. Well, uh, there's some students says I'm running a cigar merchant business looking for partners. Uh, I just say here, so if there's any audience uh, interested, you can connect these students. But do remind me, uh, we used to have uh, 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 the Beckson students, uh, right? If I'm correct. Uh, so it's uh, also he come to do a entrepreneurship course. Uh, it's a group of uh, Mexican uh, cigar or coffee. Uh, yeah. But you also maybe remember the Swedish student, uh -huh. which she was uh, uh, having a cigar shop in Sweden. Ah, okay. So, um, well, for cigars, yeah, that's a good, you know, so uh, I just distribute this information here to yeah. see if anyone is interested. Um well, this person said, I'm from Nigeria, ready to start a company in China. Very good. Hope that today's uh, webinar will provide some uh, uh, suggestions, which is yeah. useful to <clears throat> you. And- uh, May I also say something? Yes, please. Yiling? If you talk about uh, really setting up your company, I think you could ask uh, Yiling 
she will be able to introduce you to uh, professional people to help you with uh, setting this up where you are where you are a foreigner uh yeah here a lot of uh, uh this uh, i want to read one quote actually from a uh, uh, a story about a young entrepreneur so who uh, found a company in China is a French people. He said, uh, when they, uh, he was asked when, why you want to set up, uh, what kind, uh, are there many, uh, any special opportunities in Shanghai? Uh, where he said, China give people a chance regardless of their backgrounds or track record. What is a passion can quickly become a business. I think uh, that also, um, attracts uh, a lot of foreigners to uh, have their uh, to uh, implement their dreams in uh, Shanghai uh, does uh, one student says does the university have a logistic or freight forwarding course uh, we do have a logistic course uh, but we don't have flight forwarding course um some students said, I'm interested in study business in China. Uh, well, then you, you should stay because later my colleague Daniel will do a brief introduction about the, the English taught special uh, programs in uh, in business. And uh, ah, we see someone will join in March. That's great. Uh, someone. Well, that's good. We see a lot of people has uh, this person said, I'm a digital marketer and a CEO certified and now want to start freelancing in China. I'm here in Jingdezhen right now. Uh, Jingdezhen is uh, like, a, as uh, Anson mentioned, it's a, a smaller city, like a second or third tiers. So yeah, that's a very good start. And a lot of foreigners who have been in China for many years know this uh, uh, apps, digital apps, uh, well, so they actually do provide a service for foreigners on how to use uh, marketing, do the marketing, you know, on those apps. Rural woman, the hand. I think uh, what we are doing is trying to build a network for some people, business person already in this uh, uh, platform. Uh, well, there's a question. It's true that China real estate are facing hard time. Um, I think this is not the subject related to this uh, topics. Uh, I think, it, but my personal view is uh, during the pandemic, all the, the whole world are facing the similar problems. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, the government is... Uh, um, implement some policies to support uh, uh, the whole real estate industry. Uh, well, do you please have a networking event? Uh, well, we usually do not uh, having networking events online, but that's a good suggestion. So in our business uh, programs, we do have, uh, you know, a lot of events actually will help students do business. We will bring students to the industries, meet people, practitioners from different industries. So that gives them good opportunities to network. Um, uh, the question, does Donghua University offer DBA with hybrid, stu uh, hybrid study? Uh, no, uh, Donghua University do not offer uh, DBA, only offers uh, doctor programs. Uh, uh, in business and uh, the students must study in person. There's no hy hybrid study. Uh, and uh, is there a capital requirement and employment requirement to get uh, entrepreneurship after graduation? The answer is no. Like I said, uh, the entrepreneurship visa is different from a work visa Entre uh, entrepreneur visa basically is the government to give you the opportunities two year period to implement your business plan so you don't need a uh, capital there's no capital requirement there's no employment requirement the only thing you need is a business plan which can be recognized and approved and supported by the incubation center
And the similar question said, how does it cost? Is there an opportunities to full scholarship? Uh, so you mean about the programs? Uh, or So I'm not quite understanding uh, these questions, but if you mention about the scholarships to study in the business taught bachelor programs, uh, uh, we don't have the full scholarship. Uh, well, can we get networking or import export exhibition in that information? Uh, well, you can get those kind of uh, uh, event information online. Uh, Shanghai government has uh, its English website will provide all kinds of uh, event informations and also some uh, uh, companies, uh, Shanghai experts, so uh, different, uh, you know, uh, websites, apps will give such kind of uh, information. So there's one question, maybe answering you can help answer. Uh, this person, it's uh, Claudia ask, what can young foreign students learn from Chinese entrepreneurs? I think um, we can learn from each other. Of course, that's always the right, the right answer. But if you think about, if I think about the Chinese entrepreneur, the, the quick decision making, very flexible, especially in the introduction phase, very easy to uh, adapt uh, their products if needed uh, and or services if needed. And in that sense, I think we can learn something from them. And um, another one is that the scaling up. Of course, they are very good at it, very good at scaling up. A third one, if you uh, have to ask me, and um, that's also based on personal experience but for myself. It's not whether this is academically true, maybe not, but uh, manufacturing here in China, especially in certain sectors like uh, Shenzhen, Sunchen, is very, very, it's very well possible still. If you are um, making a new product and you need a prototype and you are interested in, uh, let's say, let it let the prototype man be manufactured in China, there are very good opportunities here. And I think there's no country you can do this better. That's what I think. Okay, thank you. And uh, the student asks, can a freshman run a business with his or her student visa? Uh, well, the answer is no. You cannot run running your business with your student visa, but you can prepare for your business after you graduate. So uh, theoretically, yes. Uh, well, in a word, well, everything goes fast. This person, Duker, asked, in a word, well, everything goes fast. How can we efficiently set our company up for success and speed things up in a fast developing country? That's an interesting question, and so can you answer this question? The world where everything goes fast, how can you finish it? That's, uh, if, if, you, if you talk, I, I, my, my answer is actually two things, uh, two very different things that talk about innovation. And I will, will tell you this uh, from, from an example which I experienced myself, for example, in Uganda, because I was teaching in Uganda five, six years ago. And what I, what I found out at that time is that every, many people in Uganda were paying with their mobile telephone. And of course, in Uganda is a developing country. It's not a country like, for example, the Netherlands or something like that. But, so I thought by myself, how is this possible? You know, uh, you, you, I'm, I'm going to a developing country. The salaries are relatively low, but everybody. And of course, if you are going into a developing country, you can also leap clock uh, certain technology. And of course, that's what's happening. And Another very important thing, if you talk about entrepreneurship and innovation, is the adaptability of the developing country. The, 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 the adaptability and the speed of adapting new technologies and uh, innovations in developing countries is, is, is rather fast. 
And in that sense, um, uh, another one is, of course, that by nature, a company should be more flexible, should be more agile, should be more agile, agile or agile. And not, uh, I always make uh, uh, the wrong pronunciation, but you, you need to, yeah, let's say, uh, you need to be responsive to the to the changes. And this is something which is very much uh, being taught in supply chain management and operations management, where efficiency is very important, but where uh, it, it more and more becomes important to be responsive and flexible. That is an, a, a standard answer to this question, I think. Thank you. Ed. So look, look from two perspectives. Okay. Uh, so uh, this student asked, do you offer short-term training online? You mean, if you mean entrepreneurship course, I'm sorry, we don't. But uh, we were considering in the future to organize uh, similar workshops online, as, uh, uh, maybe invite more uh, you know, entrepreneurs to share some experience. Currently, we don't have uh, uh, offer such kind of training programs online. Uh, this Ryan asked if there are entrepreneur community at Donghua University to connect more about business. Well, if you must say community, I think uh, the student group, uh, students in the entrepreneurship and innovation class at the community, right? But actually in Shanghai, because the, the environments do encourage entrepreneurship, you can find a lot of uh, uh, communities, entrepreneur uh, communities, uh, you know, uh, for foreigners, uh, Chinese, or different, very mixed, I think you can find which will help you uh, get uh, connection with the business. Also, there's a lot of events, workshops. That's also kind of uh, events, uh, you know, uh, people used to uh, have uh, networks. Any other suggestions? No, I agree with you. Okay. And uh, so... I think, uh, you know, uh, we will not take more questions because Anson needs to leave for uh, yes. the Caesar's defense. So, uh, well, if you have any questions, so we would first, uh, we will turn to uh, my colleague, Daniel. He will give a little more about uh, uh, the introduction about better programs uh, uh, in business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Yiling, and thank you, Anson, for presenting this uh, very thoughtful ideas of entrepreneurship and innovation. So as part of uh, the idea, Donghua University also we offer English taught bachelor's programs in business. So we have three pathways, three uh, fields uh, you may choose from. One is business administration. Uh, the second one is bachelor's of economics in international trade. And the third one is bachelor's of management in marketing. So these three programs are all English taught business program, but it's with uh, four unique uh, advantages. So uh, the first one is it's a fully credit systems, which means you can choose the courses you like. It follows a credit based system. So with this course, uh, you can graduate within three to six years. And we also have two intakes each year, spring intake. So the coming one will be 2024 spring intakes. And you also have opportunity to study abroad. We have collaboration with university in Netherlands and different other uh, nations around the world. So main topics and uh, main strengths for this program, of course, as Anson explained, we have a very strong entrepreneurship focus. We set several courses with entrepreneurship elements, uh, for example, entrepreneurship and innovation, case integrations. You can apply your business model 
to the course and our mentor or even professor will guide you to actually make that plan come true. And also you are studying at Tsinghua University in Shanghai. We focus on the Chinese sacraments. So you not only to learn the knowledge of business, but also with the Chinese culture, the Chinese language perspective. Also, a different types of innovation in marketing and business. And we also highlight fashion marketing, fashion management, logistics in our course plan. So these are the pictures for our current students. They went, went to Alibaba for the field trip. And they also invited to other events, for example, uh, the latest, the sixth uh, Chinese International Import Expo. They're working with the Scottish company to, uh, they worked with the Scotland company to do import and output to experience the real uh, management environment. And we also support students with career services so as, as Eileen explained before, we have uh, mentors and professors to guide you with your business plan. We also have your career service center to help you to build up your own career. So where to find us in our program? We are English top programs so you can find us at Donghua English website. Here is the web door name and under the bachelor's programs column, you will find all the program information, application materials and application guidance. So here is the listed basic requirement for you to apply for this program. So as for a bachelor's, applicants, uh, you need to be around 16 to 35 as a non-Chinese citizen. And the basic requirement, the basic material you need to submit, uh, the first thing, of course, your valid passport. And the second one is graduate or leaving certificate and your full transcript during your higher secondary school or other equivalence levels. For example, GED, IB, or AP, the National Higher Education Certificate. And the third one is language accreditation. So this is the English top programs. You need to have basic English proficiency. For the IELTS, the overall score should be 6.0. And for TOEFL, you need to obtain at least 80. And you can, uh, the, all these above certificate can be exempted if your entire higher secondary school courses were taught in English. And the four, four things, because uh, we are entrepreneurship programs with uh, ideas of doing business. So we highlight your personal statement. You can mention your business ideas and your intention in your personal statements. Of course, it is have to be written in English. And the fifth one is the resume. And the rest of the documents is the basic personal information documents. So we might ask you to provide supplementary documents based on your application. So here is the application procedures. Uh, as I explained to you, you can find our program information and you will uh, link to the application platform. You can see the doorway for uh, the application or the application should be submitted online. And uh, once you create your portal, uh, we will, the admission officer will email you uh, with some supplementary documents to complete your application. And following, uh, we will also invite you uh, to do an interview online with our professor for this business program. And once the application result release, you will have to confirm your acceptance, collect your admission documents, 
and apply for the on-campus university dorm. So the final step, the university will give you the decision and also provide you with the study type visa. And we are waiting for you to the enrolled program on-site at Donghua. So the coming intakes is 2024 spring, uh, which starts in March, 2024. The deadline should be the end of this month, December the 30th. And the next one, uh, 2024, full intake starting in September, 2024. The deadline should be postponed to June 30th, 2024. And of, of course, if you haven't decided to pursue a degree in this program, you can apply to a visiting scholar to apply visiting study at Donghua University, choosing your ideal program. So after you complete all the courses, of course, you will receive the course completion certificate as a visiting study student. So that's pretty much all for today. We invite Ansem to introduce the entrepreneurship in China and Eileen give us some guidance and information about applying entrepreneurship visa for students doing business in China. And I give you a brief introduction about these three English taught business program. Hope you get some knowledge about doing business in Shanghai, especially study business at Donghua. You can scan that QR code to follow all our social media platforms Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We'll also post our university life, especially student entrepreneurship stories in our social platforms. And also we we'll welcome you to keep in touch, to share some stories while your experience was doing business in China, so of course. And also we are looking forward to meet you at Donghua as a student. Thank you all for today.